say, and especially our special guests who have joined us today. You're looking very, uh, very good, Mr. President, with that hat. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm proud to wear it. <laughs> well, we know it's been a really long journey for all of you athletes to get here, but what an incredible 16 days of Olympic moments we have had. And we want you to know we are so proud of your determination and your strength in this journey and your resilience in preparing through the many challenges of COVID over the past year and a half. Uh, we'd also like to thank right now and acknowledge our Japanese hosts and the incredible people of Tokyo for the years of preparation, the extraordinary challenges they had in pulling off the most difficult Olympic Games in history. We are forever grateful for the beautiful stage that they set to allow the athletes of the world to compete. And right now, I'd love to pass it to our CEO, Sarah Hirschland, to highlight a few moments from over the past few weeks. Sarah? Good. Thank you, Suzanne. You're right. We are so proud. This team came to Tokyo and achieved what you came here to do. And as you earned a lot of medals, and I will say a lot, you also created history and inspired our country in new ways. Like Carissa Moore's first ever gold medal in surfing and Tamira Mariama Mensa Stock becoming the first black woman to win a gold in women's freestyle wrestling. I think Tamara's here with us, so I hope you'll wave and say hello. But what also stood out were the amazing moments of sportsmanship, like that of triathlete Kevin McDowell, who I know is, is with us this morning or this evening, who in the midst of the race of his life, in grabbing a water from the sidelines and handing it to his competitor who wasn't able to take it. So Kevin, thank you for inspiring us. Uh, hope you'll wave and say hello too. Each of these moments are etched in our memories, and we're here to celebrate all of you and the accomplishments both on and off the field of play. And as you know, we have two very special fans that want to help celebrate, and it is my pleasure and honor to pass this over uh, to, to two guests who can't wait to share their own congratulations. Welcome, President Joe Biden and First Lady, Dr. Joe Biden. Well, thank you so very, very much. You know, I, I know you have a sense of it, but I don't think you'll appreciate till you get home. How proud you made America, not just the winning, but more medals than anyone, and you may end up with as many gold before this is over as China. But here's the deal. You really represented America. You represented the soul of the country. Whether it was, I mean, I, I thought when, when, the, when you're, you get knocked down by an, an opponent on track and you bang and you stop him to go back and pick him up and walk to the finish line with him? Come on. That, that's what America is supposed to be about. And you represented every single thing that we stand for. You really did. And, and I, I just think that, you know, you, it wasn't just for a lot, of the, a lot of you, it wasn't just your athletic ability. It was your moral courage, the courage you showed, the courage those who are under real pressure and, 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 intellectual, and, and pressure, psychological pressure, and being able to like what, 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 what Kate Ledecky, what, what Ledecky did. Uh, she wasn't under the pressure. She just went out and won. She just won everything. And, and, that was in front of her. And I, that, if I know where she's on, I can't see her, but Katie, if you're on here, I realize that you can probably swim a mile quicker than most people could run a mile. Um, it's just amazing. All, all, it's just all, all you've done. And you know, when we talk about all of us, like Simone Biles, I mean, the courage you had to get back up at that beam after, at the very end, you still win the bronze. I mean, you showed everything about who we are as a people. And watching your families, watching your families was as exciting almost as watching you guys. I mean, they were overjoyed. And they were, I mean, and, and, and I don't think there's a harder Olympics to get ready for. You guys are, you know, you, you, you practiced for four years, you got ready, and then COVID hit, and you had to wait another year. And I just think you're, I just can't tell you 
how, you know, you remind us of what an amazing country we are. And you make us look so good as a country. These are the things that people look at around the world more than anything that I do as your president or other people do in public life. They get the impression of who we are as Americans, who we are. And you and you handle yourself with such grace and such such, such decency. It just you made me so damn proud. And I I wanted, I wanted to just say thank you for the warm welcome that I received uh, when I went to Tokyo. And uh, so I saw uh, a first. I saw the three on three uh, basketball game. Uh, everything everything I saw, we won. I was so I was so happy, and I saw. Uh, the soccer game, and I saw the swimming, and I saw softball, and it was just, I mean, it was so exciting just to watch, just to watch you compete. And like Joe said, you did it with such dignity and grace with all that you've been through these past few years, you know, the training and waiting and waiting. And, um, and we just... You know, as uh, the president and first lady, I mean, we just could not feel more proud of all of you and everything you did in representing our country. And, the, and all Americans feel the exact same way. When you come home, you'll see everybody's glued to their TVs to see what's going to happen next. And you made us proud. And I want to thank you so much. And it was just great. I couldn't talk to a lot of you, but at least I could wave from the sidelines and, um, and represent our, our, our country. So thank you for the opportunity for uh, allowing me to, to be there to represent you. And by the way, the Japanese Prime Minister is a very smart guy. He's a friend. I know him. But he asked Jill to come around represent the country, <laughs> not me. So, you know, he, he really knows what he's doing. He knows how to get things done. But I, I just can't tell you, you all, you just made our hearts swell. Not mm -hmm. a joke. You restored the soul of America in so many ways. You really, really did. That's not hyperbole. That's a fact. But I need to promise from all of you, you all come see us in the White House in the fall. We'll set a date, and I'd love to have you all come to the White House if you're, if you're willing to do that. So the nation can see it, and I can brag more on you. And the you know, our ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas Greenfield, is there. But uh, I just want you to know she's going to, I don't know, it's, it's, you're just incredible. I just, can't wait to see you. <laughs> that's a fact. We're probably keeping you too long already, but there's about 10 events I'd like to talk about, but I'll wait till you get to the White House. <laughs> well, thank you, President Biden and First Lady Dr. Biden. I'd, I'd love, I know we have so many of Team USA athletes on the line, but I'd love to take just a moment and introduce you to, to three special athletes. Um, the first is track and field star and four-time Olympian Kara Winger, who will serve as our closing ceremony flag bearer, carrying our flag as they march <laughs> this evening to close the ceremony. So, Kara, can I ask you, tell us how it feels to walk with the flag tonight, to know that's what's coming up for you today. I really, thank you, Sarah. First of all, happy to be here here. Um, I really can't even imagine still what it's going to be like to walk into that stadium with the flag. I've had more disappointment in my career than victory and to be voted on by this incredible Team USA for this honor is more amazing than I can put into words. So just incredibly honored, very excited, really amazed that I get to have this closure moment um, because these teammates voted for me in my last Olympic Games, uh, since I've never been on that podium, but I'm so proud to represent them um, um, because it's such an honor that they chose me. They picked you because of your character. Kid. Yeah. 
it's it's wild. It's the biggest honor of <laughs> my life. I'm so so proud. Yep. Thank you. Wow, terrific. Congratulations and and mm -hmm. Mr. President I can vouch for her character. You're exactly right. She's an amazing woman. Let's talk about someone else whose character is pretty extraordinary and moved to track and field athlete Isaiah Jewett. Isaiah caught our attention from his act of sportsmanship after being tripped in the qualifying round of his 800 meter heat. His moment of kindness is one we will all remember. Mm -hmm. Isaiah, can you take us through a little bit about what happened? Uh. Hi. Um, yes, of course. Uh, first, I would love to. Uh, I just want to address. Um, love you guys. Big fans. Love what you're doing. Um, I'd love to come to the White House too. Just want to throw that out there. But <laughs> in the in terms of the race, um, I don't know. I was really feeling pretty good about the race and how I was executing, and I felt like I was really into the zone. And then as soon as I came into the turn, I felt a knee hit my foot, and it made me trip over my leg. And then. And when I tried to recover, I felt another foot hit me again. And I knew, like, as soon as I got onto the ground, like, my dreams of getting to the final and placing were done. And I felt kind of hurt for a second while I was laying down. Then I actually looked at the other runner, and I saw how defeated he looked. And for some reason, I just felt like, in some way, I want to help out. In some way, like, this is this is bigger than me. Like, I know that he's been here a couple times, and this is probably a couple of his last ones, but I just wanted to do whatever I could to say, like, hey, man, it's okay. Let's, let's finish this race together. Like, I wanted to be some type of hero and show that, you know, just some good sportsmanship at the end of the day, because I feel like that's what's important. Like, not dwelling on these things, not dwelling on these problems that happened, but, but finishing what we started and making sure everybody's okay. Because at the end of the day, um, we're all people and we all go through the same nervousness and we all go through the same pain. So might as well finish what we started and just be happy that we're actually here in the moment because not a lot of people made it here. So I was just so happy in the fact that I was able to be a hero to a lot of people and even just be at the Olympic Games. It's just such a blessing. Even to be here and talking to you guys, it's just such a blessing yeah. meeting all you guys. And sorry if I'm rambling on. It's just so oh, crazy being in the, in the present, in the present moment of like this Olympics, like just seeing different people and competing and being noticed. And that's what I really love about being heard and being shown like your true character. Isaiah, like, let me say something. He is our, you are our hero. But by the way, Isaiah, all kidding aside, America, when it leads the world, it leads not by the example of our power, but by the power of our example. That's the God's truth. And you are an epitome of that. And we thank you for it. We thank you for it. The Man. power of Man. our example. I really mean it. It had profound impact around the world. It really did. Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of profound impact, our last athlete really needs no introduction. Simone Biles exemplifies what it means to be a true Olympic champion. We have been blown away by Simone's accomplishments in the gym and are now forever inspired and grateful to her for prioritizing mental health and well-being and continuing to serve as a role model for Team USA and for the country. Simone, thank you for being here. How does it feel to be home? Yes, hi. Um, it feels amazing <laughs> to be home. It's been a long journey. Um, the Olympics was not how I expected it to go, but putting my mental and my physical health first will probably be one of my greatest accomplishments. If you would have asked me um, in my younger years, I would have probably been too stubborn. But at that point, I knew that 
I just had to take a step back, let the other girls go up and do their job. And I'm very proud of the way they handled everything, especially last minute with me having to step back. But um, to have mental health be talked about more in sports is really nice because at the end of the day, we are humans before athletes. So it is nice to be back home, though. Yes. <laughs> well, you set an example. I really mean it, Simone. I mean, you know, one of the things that Mrs. Biden and Joel and I have worked on is we work with a lot of uh, soldiers who are coming home with post-traumatic stress. And they're like you athletes. They're, you, you never say no. You never give up. You never say you can't do it. You just keep going. But, right. And so for, for a military person to say, I need help, is incredibly, incredibly difficult. But it shouldn't be. It's just it's, it's no different than if you broke your finger or broke your arm or had a physical injury. And you, one of the greatest athletes in the world, you had the courage. No, I really mean it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not playing yeah. a game. You had the courage to say, I need some help. We need some help. I need some time. And you gave an example to everybody. And guess what? You got back up in that damn beam. By the way, the thing that frightens me the most is the beam. <laughs> yeah. I, I always thought I was a pretty good athlete. I was a pretty good baseball and football player. And I'm a, I, you know, in high school, my Walter Mitty dream was <laughs> playing the pros. You think I'm kidding. I'm not. I had to give it up because uh, you know, I'd become president. What the hell? I had to settle. <laughs> but all kidding aside, all kidding aside, it was it's just amazing to watch you all. And just to watch even those of you who did not get involved in a particularly focused, you know, dilemma, but just the way you treated one another, just the way you could see it. I, I guess you knew the cameras were on you and all the events that are watching you get in and out of the pool, on and off the track, on and off the high, the, 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 the parallel bar, the uneven parallel bar. I mean, all of it. But I tell you what, doing a flip on a four-inch beam is my <laughs> idea of going to purgatory. I, <laughs> I, I, I try most anything else before I try that. Anyway. Well, you brought us joy. And I think this country has really um, been through just, a, you know, has needed healing. And yeah. I think that all the athletes in the games really brought Americans together and brought us joy again. And for that, I thank you. And, um, and I have to mention, I love that we have so many moms on the screen, you know, holding their babies. So um, that's so great to see that too, that I think there are 10 moms who competed. So good for you. Good for you. <laughs> God, I love you all, man. David, you can smile, man. It's okay. <laughs> David Hughes, I see you on the camera. You haven't smiled yet. <laughs> there, there you go. You go. <laughs> Thank you, man. You're a hell of an athlete. You're one hell of an athlete. Anyway, I shouldn't get going. I can get myself in trouble here. But I never get in trouble with things I say, I know. <laughs> no one ever doubts I mean what I say. The problem is I sometimes say all that I mean. Oh, uh, anyway, but thank you. Thank you for the joy, the pride, the hope, the hope you gave us all. That's what you did. You gave people so much hope. Thank you. See you in the White House. See you in the White House. Thanks. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. We'll see you soon in the White House. Yep. We're counting on it. <laughs>